how wonderful person this is Anton and back in 22 or I guess last year from when I'm making this video you might remember that some of the initial releases from the James Webb Space Telescope were first followed by a lot of really funny memes essentially comparing previous observations from the Hubble Telescope with new observations from the James Webb with new observations just being so much more detailed and providing just so much more additional information. Now obviously these were just a joke but the reality is that obviously the James Webb was making these incredible new observations that were previously completely unavailable to modern science. But during these early releases and these early observations, some of the most exciting discoveries came from the galactic cluster you see right here, referred to as SMACS J0723. This is the image from the James Webb, and here is the same image taken by the Hubble telescope. And of course what made this image exciting is the presence of a relatively powerful gravitational lens that allowed the scientists to suddenly see a lot of really distant galaxies that became dramatically magnified as their light passed in front of their gravitational lens. And in the process the image contained 87 ultra-distant galaxies. Or I guess to be more correct, ultra-distant galactic candidates. With redshifts making them appear as they existed in possibly the first 500 million years of the existence of the universe. And that number, 87, was surprisingly high and way more than anyone expected. Moreover, some of these galaxies delivered really unexpected results. The redshift was really high. Prior to this, the galaxy with the highest redshift, or basically the farthest galaxy we knew, was GN Z11, with a redshift of 11. But the discoveries from this particular image even suggested redshifts as high as 17 or maybe even higher which actually would imply some galaxies already existed when the universe was only 240 million years old. Which kind of suggested that large massive galaxies already existed pretty much within a few million years after the first stars formed. That kind of created a bit of a problem for modern cosmology and I guess more importantly created a lot of buzz about maybe the Big Bang theory being completely incorrect and the universe possibly being something entirely different from what the scientists believed for several decades since the Big Bang propositions. Which, if true of course, would create so many new problems because a lot of stuff would be impossible to explain with what's known as steady state universe. But that's beside the point. The point here was that these galaxies appear to be really far and they appear to be almost impossible. Or I guess more like very improbable. And so in this video what I wanted to answer is one simple question. So what happened to these early discoveries? Were these candidates confirmed? And are these galaxies actually as far away as they were originally claimed to be? Or did new research prove this to be more or less incorrect? And so basically in this video we're going to explore most of these early discoveries from the James Webb and what the scientists discovered in just the last few weeks, specifically the paper that you can find in the description that goes through extremely detailed analysis using spectroscopy which allows extremely precise measurements of galactic distances. But I guess first a very important clarification. This particular image was just the first attempt, or I guess the first test, for what the scientists refer to as the deep field imagery. James Webb actually has at least four more active surveys that's already been discovering more galaxies. We have the GLASS survey that investigated the Lens Galactic Cluster Abel 2744, more commonly known as the Pandora's Cluster, the Cosmos Webb, the survey that represents the largest so far, and is most likely going to be announcing a lot of discoveries in the next few months. The James Webb Space Telescope Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, also known as JATES, whose discoveries we've discussed previously, and the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey, also known as SEERS, which technically was actually responsible for making these early observations and early discoveries, but there's still quite a lot of data left that's not been processed yet. And intriguingly, one of the discoveries from SEERS was this unusual galaxy you see right here known as Sears 93316. The apparent redshift for this galaxy was about 16 and a half, which would imply certain massive, very bright galaxies existed really early on, within about 250 million years after the Big Bang. But this was just a candidate galaxy. Its distance was only measured using redshift. Now this is really important because redshift by itself is more or less just a suggestion or basically apparent redshift which represents the redness of the galaxy assuming certain parameters. Just to give you a more visual perspective here, so let's just take a look at some of the more distant galaxies right here in Space Engine. You'll notice that some galaxies are sort of yellowish, some are kind of orange, but some appear relatively red. For example, there's a galaxy right there that seems to be really red. 
and it does appear to be somewhat Milky Way-ish in terms of shape. Now, it's quite possible that this is indeed a Milky Way-like galaxy that's been redshifted because of its extreme distance, but it's also possible that it's somewhat redshifted, or appears redshifted, because of, for example, presence of a lot of dust. Dust by itself can make certain things appear to be very red. On the other hand, in some distant galaxies, due to the presence of a lot of other gas in between the galaxy and us, you might actually just see certain types of light more often than other types. For example, maybe this galaxy does have a lot of blue light that's actually just blocked by something else. In other cases, when the galaxy stops star formation, it also generally tends to turn more red as well. So basically, just by itself, the galaxy can appear to be red and thus appear to be more redshifted. And so just the apparent redshift itself is unfortunately not enough to determine the exact distances. Which was exactly the case for this galaxy. But there's one ability that the James Webb has that other telescopes, like Hubble, did not. Because it has such a wide infrared spectrum, it's able to see a variety of light coming from these extremely distant galaxies, which gives it a very important power. It's able to generate galactic spectra, or frequencies of light coming from distant galaxies of various elements that we know usually exist in those galaxies. And usually in various galactic spectra, we do have certain breaks or certain peaks that can then serve as a direct measurement for various distances. The most famous one is what's known as Lyman break. It's essentially a sudden drop off in certain frequencies because the light coming from these distant galaxies is unable to penetrate a lot of neutral hydrogen that's essentially in this early universe. And so the galaxies in those frequencies become more or less invisible. And this Lyman break is perfect for determining distances to some of these distant galaxies. And so not so long ago, we've discussed the official confirmation of some of these galaxies at certain distances. Right now, this one right here is the farthest we've discovered to date, with the distance confirmed to be at the redshift of 13.2. At this point, the universe was probably around 400 million years old. But this was just one confirmation. We obviously had 87 galaxies in total that needed to be confirmed. And so the scientists went through pretty much most of them, especially the ones that created the most buzz, by using very similar spectral analysis. And because this galaxy right here was probably the most exciting to test, let's obviously start with this. Yeah, it failed. It's not even close to being as far as initial claims. Instead of being at redshift of 16.4, it turned out to be only at the redshift of 4.9, or about 1 billion years after initial proposition. So the universe was already 1.2 billion years old. And because this is a bright galaxy, very enriched in various elements, also possessing very strong emission lines, and very likely containing a lot more mass than expected from an early galaxy, confirming that this is a more developed galaxy means that nothing here needs to be rewritten and no physics are broken. Interestingly, another similar galaxy was discovered by this survey at a very similar redshift of 4.9 that the scientists very early established was just masquerading as a high redshift galaxy. In reality, it just contained huge amounts of dust that made it look much more red than it should be. So both of these galaxies appear to be much closer. Then there was another discovery of a galaxy at a redshift of 14 that one of the scientists named after his daughter. It became known as the Macy's Galaxy. And turns out that, well, it's just not as far away. Still pretty far, just not as far. Its redshift was confirmed to be 11.4, which means that the universe was about 390 million years old. So maybe not as far as this galaxy, but much farther than other candidates. Currently, I believe it's like fifth farthest discovered so far. And further analysis of other galaxies established that most of them were much, much closer to us. Two more existed when the universe was about 400 to 500 million years old, but the light from most of these candidates came from much older universe when it was already at least 600 million years old, with the actual confirmations being extremely accurate, using very specific spectroscopic analysis, as you can see in this image. Although intriguingly, at least a couple more galaxies were discovered at redshift of 4.9 in a very similar region, which actually does suggest that maybe this candidate is actually part of some kind of an early galactic cluster with all galaxies at a relatively similar distance. And that of course means that all of these galaxies discovered so far and all of these early candidates more or less fit directly into the picture of the universe we had before the James Webb captured all of these images. The universe very likely started with a few stars at first, these stars grew larger into larger clusters, this then formed into smaller galaxies, the galaxies developed and became bigger over time, and eventually formed into larger clusters. And based on the spectroscopic analysis of galaxies discovered so far, there does seem to be quite a lot of evidence for all of this happening as it expected to happen. 
Now maybe this can be seen as, I guess, confirmation bias, or basically scientists trying to confirm cosmology that they assumed existed, but I mean, the actual evidence is there as well. All of the redshifts for all of these galaxies so far do not seem to deviate from previous assumptions, with the galaxies themselves not also being particularly different either. And I guess more importantly, this right now being the definitive most distant galaxy we've discovered to date. But a lot of these discoveries also tell us a little bit more about the early universe that nobody really knew before. For example, there does seem to be a very rich population of different galaxies, and even galaxies containing global clusters and very bright stars, that already existed in the universe in the first few hundred million years of its existence, with the numbers being much higher than originally predicted. The scientists have also discovered quite a lot of evolved bright galaxies, and some of them enriched in various elements, really early on as well, even when the universe was only about 350 million years old. This connects to other videos in the description where various explanations are kind of proposed, but it also connects to this really recent study from just a few days ago, where scientists proposed different types of models to try to explain how various galaxies were able to produce stars so quickly. And in essence, it's all really about the type of universe that it used to be back in the days. It was enriched in hydrogen and helium, it was also much more dense and contained much larger chunks of matter, and some stars could potentially grow to hundreds if not thousands of solar masses. But more importantly, these conditions led to extremely effective star formation, or starburst regions, that were able to exist so early on because there was just nothing stopping them from forming stars. For example, in the modern universe there are things like black holes or even things like heated gas that normally stop star formation. This very likely was not the case early on, with the universe sort of allowing stars to form as much as they wanted. And that's what a lot of these early galaxies did, growing to large sizes very quickly. Which means that all of these images from the James Webb basically show us frames of various distant early galaxies kind of growing up and growing larger, more developed and more massive, but in a kind of a messy way. With huge amounts of very active regions, large amounts of activity and lots and lots of different gas regions where a lot of starburst happens all the time. And so none of these galaxies very likely looked like this at all. Most of them were more or less irregular in shape, with most of them not even falling into any specific category just yet. Actually, it would even be difficult to call them galaxies. They're sort of proto-galaxies that are developing and growing and changing their shapes all the time. But we also have to remember that this is just the beginning. All of this was discovered only after approximately one hour of total observations. It literally took James Webb one hour to find all of this. Now, as you might remember, Hubble Telescope at some point spent approximately several months looking at the same spot, creating what's known as the Ultra Deep Field Image. Once James Webb is able to do the same, we're going to discover an immense amount of new stuff. Which means that in the next few years, we're going to be making incredible discoveries that nobody can imagine right now. But chances are, we're not going to be discovering something too major that's going to somehow break modern cosmology. At the moment, despite early assumptions and despite early observations, so far everything seems to be as it should be. The Big Bang seems to be real after all, the galactic formation seems to happen in a somewhat similar way to how we expected, with just maybe some caveats. One big caveat of course being that it seems to be more active and way more hectic, and I guess more importantly, no actual galaxy has been discovered existing before the universe was approximately 250 million years old. Which by the way, could maybe break certain theories. But this is still at the beginning, and there's still going to be so much new science that we're going to be talking about in some of the future videos. If you've enjoyed this video, check out previous videos from the James Webb or other discoveries relevant to various galaxies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.